they won't make it work because there will be opportunity for so many discoveries. There will be opportunity for some people to take over. There will be some opportunity to, to bench some glutonic leaders who are so greedy and so power drunk. So they will do everything possible to block it. They will do everything possible to make it impossible. It would have been a better thing. That I was sometimes I, I tell you, when they ask me questions, I'm not really mean I'm mean, giving attention to journalists because I wouldn't want anybody to rope me. I wouldn't want anybody <laughs> to, you know, you know, all eyes are on pastors, most of And now that I'm a white coming person, they I don't want to like if I see there are some things I see. And white government is not better than any other churches. I'm not going to say one church is better than one church because we serve one Christ. We are being unified and the, the unity has been established through the mentality we have about Castle of Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Nobody want to talk about Christianity that wouldn't want to talk about God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Nobody want to talk about Jesus Christ that wouldn't talk about church. And nobody want to talk about church that wouldn't talk about Christ. So white government is not better. I am just concerned about those who are seeing white government as um, a cake church, as barbaric church. Uh, they are seeing white government churches as uh, traditional churches. Probably some of them are not close to us. Some of them are not really not knowing what white government churches are all about. Yeah. And you know, what brought about the uniqueness of the church is what we wear. And what brought about negative identity or perception of people about the church is what we wear. If ordinary person who is not a Christian should wear white garment, and the person is drinking beer, beside the road, and he doesn't go to church. The moment they can see the white garment, they will say, all these white garment people. Yeah. So it is the uniformity that has brought about people's negative thoughts about us. So it is not that the white garment is better than them, or any church is better than any church, because there's no church in heaven. They that are sub Pentecostal churches who are saying white garment churches as um, inferior to them, and I call many of them marketers. I call many of them brand managers. I call many of them um, um, self-acclaimed righteous leaders. But I'm not in a position to say one white, one church is better than any church because we are following Jesus Christ. What's the we believe in transition, not tradition. And we, we believe in tradition, transition, not tradition, because there are some things we don't do here. Like Genesis, don't go to stream. We don't go to stream to go bath. We don't go. Um, some people believe it's been part of the tradition, or some pastors will tell them go to the stream and bath and do that. We don't do that. Yeah. Why? Yeah, because I, I, you know, I told you every every leader must know the place of his own assignment. Jesus came, and he was not doing what the Pharisees and the Pharisee and the Sadducees were doing. He came to bring new good news. And Second Corinthians 12, 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things has passed away, and it becomes new. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of great people all around me, but no one would say I have ever charged them one error in my life. That even if I go to churches to minister, I don't collect. God said you shouldn't collect. I know how to bless you. So I must have been led by the Spirit of God the way I operate. Like, I just believe going to stream, what is the essence of going to stream? What if I want to go to, I mean, go to the stream to do? Let's do it here. Let's pray here. Let's fast here. And we're going to have results. And um, I'm not trying to want to condemn those who are going to the stream. I just, I just believe Nigeria, I mean, the world is growing and the world is transitionally moving. We, we should not have the mentality of a monument. We should have that movement mentality that we should be paradigmly shifted. Uh, this wasn't how city people started. City people is getting better now. We have city people TV, we have city people. So we should be paradigmly shifted. It shouldn't be the normal thing they've been doing before. I'm not saying it's not good, but trust me, we just um, constructed our baptismal pool. But other white government churches or celestial churches will go to the uh, river to do their baptism. Story on the internet about a pastor who took um, some members to the stream and one of them drowned. And a pastor was trying to want to baptize his members, and crocodile came, crocodiles came out and attacked the pastor. And another one, they say a pastor took some people to the stream, and all of a sudden, they saw blood flowing from the other side of the river, and they attacked the pastor that was the one that did it. So I said, okay. And the, most of those pastors are tall. The pastor that took somebody to the stream and drowned <laughs> happened to be a tall one. If the tall person should 
you know, be attacked by the river, by the crocodile, and the other one drowned. So what about me that's a shot? What <laughs> happened to Mickey? So I wasn't condemning them. I just, okay, whatever baptism we want to do, let us do it here. We do more of leadership, we do more of conferences, we do more of empowerment, then we're useful in whatever we do. We just want to, like, uh, two or three weeks ago, I was teaching them about um, going into real estate, like, invest into the church, invest into your life. Let your business grow. And when your business grow, if you anything you want to do, you can now support the church. Not that's all what you're supposed to gather and, I mean, build your future, build your family. You're not giving it to the church and you begin to grow. That is foolishness. The Bible says, that works with the wise shall be wise, and association of fools shall be destroyed. If you want to get it right, think right, talk right, um, have right perception, have right associations, and things will work for me, you get it right. During our harvest, I said nobody should contribute money because I've got people who will support us. There are some great people in the church. This one will buy this, this one will buy this. We were talking about buying cars for the church that bought more than enough that we see. We, were, we even see that other churches who had their harvest during that time. Excuse me, because I told them, you'll see that I'm only a fool without the proof. The other time he came, the church wasn't like this. Yeah. Now my office wasn't like this. Everyone said this when we gave that. Yeah, job. everything. <laughs> Why? Because I've been able to hand over to God. When you hand over to God, He will take over from you. When He takes over from you, He will cross you over. So, when I started, I grew up as a Muslim boy. My name was Wasiu. And my parents joined Christ Gospel Apostolic Church. And that's my mom behind you. She doesn't use the ring up till now. And um, she's still a deaconess in Christ Gospel Apostolic Church. I am the only celestial and my younger ones. So when I when we grew up, uh, Celestia, I mean CSC and Christ Gospel Apostolic Church happened to be a very good church, but I was born out of this person in my mouth and now all that way they taught us has got to do with the way of the Lord. Fast, pray. Even if there's nothing for us to eat, they also will be fasting. And we're actually fasting. I never knew God was using that to build us. So that was the day my, somebody abused my mother in our former church because then I, my mother wore one cloth for four years. And it was that bad that that lady said she was abusing my mother in English, but in a pidgin English, and my mother didn't really understand Yoruba and English. She was just laughing. She said in a word that my mother happens to be the one that serves God most. She wants that comes to church most. She wants that prays most. The one that cleans the church most, and she's the poorest. And she was the poorest because God has really changed her life now. Though I lost my father two years ago, so it was what I had. I, I felt bad about it, and there was a time another thing happened that. Came as, I saw it as a very big insult to my mom. And I, walk, I walked back, I, you know, I walked down the road, not too far. So, one celestial church, the man happens to be a very nice person, useful then, very young. His name is uh, Prophet Femi Shoyoye. And he showed us love and started playing with us. And I started going to his church, playing um, drums for them because I'm a very talented person and I'm a very creative person. So I, I was playing and every Sunday they used to show me love like, okay, come to our church and I started going and I just said to myself, okay, let me go to a church where they don't change their clothes, where it's just going to be warm because we're always feeling bad that, ah, they know us with this warm cloth we are wearing. I didn't know we have the opportunity to be having, changing our clothes now, we don't feel bad, but they will know us with that same clothes that we are wearing. So the shame was, I happened to be the first child, the first child of the family and, um, we are living in Oshodi before we moved to Alagbalu. I've been teaching people, don't take opportunity for granted. Identify opportunity, embrace opportunity, protect opportunity, maximize opportunity. The only money my mother, my father made then was 3,000 naira, and that was the money we used to buy the land around Alagbalu here. Mm. And we moved in, and we built the house with 3,000 naira, and that was the money at the end. So we moved into the house. So when I was in that celestial church, God said, you know, because I, mm, fasting is my life. So we've been fasting, fasting, and now that was how that was how the gift of God started in my life. You know, I was in that church. I used to go home. People started abusing my parents. You know, how can your son go to Sele? You are a deaconess. The father is a deacon, and my father is a principal. Used to be, I mean, was a principal man, very very principal. They said he knows the son. He's not going to bring disappointment to him. That let him go if that's where God asked him to go. Hmm. And truly, he told them. He spoke to my life that he, he God told him. 
God is going to use me to transform the story of the family. And that's why it's in our house. In, on Christmas Day, will be another Christmas before we eat another night. And um, two days before Christmas this year, this last year, we shared 1,000 bags of rice to people. And when we're distributing, I was so happy that we gave rice to people. 1,000 bags of rice. We have the picture, we have it all over the online and everything. And um, so when I was in that church, they showed me love. And I remember Christ in my love. So that was how the church started. Before starting the church, I never wanted to start the church. I was even thinking about me, thinking of going back to school. Right now, I still want to go back to school. I want to write my, my GCE. And I still want to go study law if possible. I want to go to last school. I know I'm going to be able to sit down with my children in the class. But mine, I want stories to be read about me. I've been to hell and back. I've been to trouble. I've been to fire. I've been to too many satanic accusations, confrontations. But God has been faithful. Because one of the matters of the greeting says, you don't want a greeting, must come to a greeting with clean hands. So when the gifts, your gifts will bring you before kings and queens. And people are talking about the grace of God upon my life. So the first miracles and testimonies happen from the people. They, they give me their land to start a church. I never wanted to start a church because I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know how to preach. But all of a sudden, we started growing, growing from that. We moved there. Then I met some people and someone assisted me too. And that was how we moved here, and the church has been growing from whatever we're growing to. How old is the church now? Our church now will be, basically, will be 17 now. But if we're to minus the former time we spent on the former place, we should say now we are here. In a room not far from the toilet, the house is called the Olowo Brown House. That's the same man who happens to be the richest man of Brown, to Olowo Brown, was, came to our church two weeks ago. Hmm. And then I used to watch television in his own room. Then, hmm. then we had no television. But my vision has really helped me to show on television. Hmm. So it's it's about most times when people come to the church, I don't really know like try to want to manipulate people with Bible. I tell them reality that you have to work with your clear conscience and you know the right thing you're supposed to do. If I have my way. I really want to help a lot of people because I've been through a lot. I remember a time I would have to go to parties to go and pack remnants. So we would not pick the meat from those remnants. That's what we would now leave back in our house. Until we go to another party, I wouldn't be able to forgive. <laughs>